Hey there, econ students and teachers. In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of cost benefit analysis and economics. This is a very fundamental concept that underlies lots of the theories you're going to learn later on the course, including the laws of supply and demand, how businesses make decisions about their profit maximizing level of output, and how firms decide how many workers to hire. Cost benefit analysis is one of the most important concepts in economics. Enjoy the video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and head over to econclassroom.com for more great resources for economic students and teachers. One of the most fundamental concepts in all of economics is the idea that every economic decision has costs and benefits. And in deciding what to do with our limited resources, individuals must weigh the costs and benefits of every economic decision. To illustrate this, we're going to look at a very simple example today that looks at how an individual decides how to use his or her limited time on a Sunday afternoon. Let's assume that it's Sunday, you've got school the next day, and you've got about five hours to kill in the afternoon before you have dinner with your family. You have to decide how to spend those five hours, and you've got two choices, basically. You can either play games, you can play video games, you can play games with your friends outside, whatever it is, or you can study for your economics exam on Monday morning. What we're going to look at here is the marginal benefits and the marginal costs of your decision to spend one, two, three, four, or five hours gaming on a Sunday afternoon. First, we should define marginal. Marginal has a meaning that you may not be aware of. Marginal is basically a fancy way of saying additional. So when we talk about the marginal benefit, the marginal benefit, we're looking at the benefit that an individual enjoys for each additional hour spent doing something in this case. We'll find that the marginal benefit of the second hour of playing games is less than the marginal benefit from the first hour of playing games. Every economic decision considers not just the additional benefit of doing something, but also the additional cost. So we're also going to be looking at the marginal cost of each additional hour of gaming in this case. So we need to add one more column to our table here. Let's go over here and we'll look at hours of gaming. We can game for either one, two, three, four, or five hours. That's how much free time I'm assuming that you have. Ultimately, we're going to graph the marginal benefit and the marginal cost of gaming. But first, we need to think about and brainstorm some possible values to put in these two fields here, marginal benefit and marginal cost. Well, let's think about this. How do we measure the benefit we get from doing something? One way we can measure our benefit or express how much benefit we derive from an activity or from a good or a service is how much we're willing to pay for that good or service. So let's consider the marginal benefit of gaming is how much you'd be willing to pay to do one hour of gaming, two hours of gaming, three hours of gaming, and so on. Well, we're looking at the marginal here. So what I want to consider is how much would I be willing to pay to play video games or games of any sort for one hour on a Sunday afternoon? That first hour of games is worth so much to me. I haven't played games all week. I've been working all week. I've been studying for my tests and quizzes at school. So I'm willing to pay a relatively high price of $25. Dollars. So that value, I'm not going to put the dollars there because I'm just using dollars as a stand-in for how much I enjoy doing something. The second hour of gaming, I'm not willing to pay as much for, though. I just don't get as much enjoyment out of it. It's not worth $25 to me anymore. I may only be willing to pay $20 for the second hour of gaming. And this decreasing marginal benefit is going to continue as I play more and more hours of video games. I don't enjoy the third hour as much, so I only get $15 of enjoyment out of it. That's the most I would be willing to pay for the third hour of gaming. The fourth hour, I also don't enjoy as much. I'm getting a little bit tired of games now. And the fifth hour, I'm only going to place a $5 value on. You can tell that I must really enjoy gaming because overall I'd be willing to pay quite a lot for five hours of gaming on a Sunday afternoon. That would be 25, 20, that's 45, plus 15 is 60, plus 10 is 70, $75. So my total value, my total benefit for five hours of gaming is actually $75. But the marginal benefit is how much I would be willing to pay for each additional hour of gaming on a Sunday afternoon. And the marginal benefit decreases the more hours I spend gaming. 
However, one thing to point out is that every hour of gaming provides me with positive marginal benefit. In other words, I do enjoy the fifth hour of gaming. It still makes me happier. I'm willing to pay $5 for that fifth hour. So you may say, well, how many hours of gaming should I do? And if you only consider the marginal benefit of gaming, the answer would be five hours of gaming because I get $5 worth of happiness from the fifth hour. However, economic decisions weigh not only the marginal benefit, they also must consider the marginal cost. And that's what we're going to look at next. In the case of playing video games on a Sunday, what is the cost? Well, there's no actual monetary cost. I don't have to put quarters into my PlayStation to play games every five or 10 minutes. The only cost is really the opportunity cost. It's what is being given up in order to play one more hour of video games. And in this scenario, let's assume that you have an economics test on Monday morning. The opportunity cost, therefore, of playing an additional hour of video games is the amount by which your score on that Monday morning test will suffer because you've played so much video games. So to look at that, we're going to talk about how many points. So we're going to look at points, points lost on the test on Monday. If I play one hour of video games, I'm not going to miss many points in my test. I mean, really, it's a hundred point test. One hour of video games isn't going to kill me. I may go from a hundred percent on that test to a 95%. So let's say that I lose five points. So lose five points if I play only one hour video games. However, I think you're going to see where this is going. The more time you spend playing games on Sunday, the worse you're going to do on Monday's test. The opportunity cost increases as I play more and more video games. The second hour of video games is going to cost me 10 points on Monday's test because I am now getting less time to study for Monday's test. The third hour is going to lose me 15 points. The fourth hour is going to lose me 20 points. And the fifth hour of video games, I'm really going to suffer. If I don't do any studying on Sunday for that Monday morning test, I'm going to lose 25 points on Monday's test. So I've got some values here. Notice these are not the same units. In the left, I've got values expressed in terms of dollars, how much I'd be willing to pay for each hour of gaming. That decreases as I play more games. In the column on the right, I've got the amount of points that I would be losing on Monday morning's test for each additional hour of gaming. So on my graph over here, I can now graph the marginal benefit and the marginal cost of gaming. The values are different, of course. I've got dollars and points. But this is just a simple illustration. Later on in the course, of course, we'll always be expressing marginal benefits and marginal costs in terms of dollars. I'll go ahead and put my values on the vertical axis. This is the marginal benefits and marginal costs going from 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 to 25. And on the horizontal axis, I'll put the hours spent gaming from 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I can now plot my marginal benefit and my marginal cost. I'll do the marginal benefit in blue to match what's in the table. The first hour of gaming provides me with $25 of marginal benefit. And the fifth hour of gaming only provides me with $5 of marginal benefit. So I can connect those two points to get my marginal benefit curve. The marginal benefit of each additional hour is less than the hour before it. The marginal cost, how many points am I going to lose my test? For the first hour of gaming, I'm only going to lose five points, but for the fifth hour of gaming, I would lose 25 points. Let's do this in purple. So we have a marginal cost of five points lost for the first hour, and that marginal cost increases as the amount of time spent gaming increases. And I've got an upward sloping marginal cost curve. So we can look at this graph and we can draw some conclusions. We can say, well, how many hours should I spend gaming? If I only spend one hour gaming, for example, the marginal benefit I get of $25 worth of happiness far exceeds the marginal cost of only five points lost on the test. So it probably makes sense for me to game for at least one hour. The second hour, again, my marginal benefit is greater than my marginal cost. I've got happiness that exceeds the cost imposed on me in terms of points lost. The third hour, the marginal benefit equals the marginal cost. And the fourth hour, the marginal cost, in terms of how many points I lose, the marginal cost is greater than the marginal benefit. It probably doesn't make sense for me to play more than three hours of video games. But because I can see from my analysis here, 
that the third hour of video games provides me with roughly the same amount of enjoyment or happiness as it costs me in terms of how many points I would give up on Monday's test. Now let me just point out once again, the values are different. Points lost on a test may be weighted more than dollars you're willing to pay to do something. Or vice versa, you may, you may say that the $15 I'm willing to pay for the third hour of gaming is worth more to me than the 15 points I lose on the test. But this lesson was all about introducing the economic concept of marginal benefit and marginal cost decision making. Every decision we make in terms of how to allocate our limited time or our scarce resources, all has to do with cost-benefit analysis. Keep that in mind as you move forward in this course. And this concept of marginal benefit and marginal cost is going to come back throughout the course in terms of how supply and demand are determined in a market, how equilibrium prices and quantities are determined in the market, and how firms, businesses will make decisions about how much of a good to produce. They're going to weigh the marginal benefit and the marginal cost of producing one more unit and only produce output up to the point where the marginal benefit and marginal cost are equal. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and head over to econclassroom.com for more great resources for economics students and teachers. Here we go. One step back.